we are going to take a closer look at big idea number two, which centers around the concept of data. And we're going to break those down into four sections, binary numbers, data compression, extracting information from data, and using programs with data. All right, so our essential knowledge uh, from binary numbers. Okay, hopefully you're good with binary numbers by this point. If not, uh, perhaps I should do a separate lesson showing the calculation. But if you're getting ready to review for the AP exam, you should have gone over this. So um, just kind of running through some essential knowledge. I uh, feel like with uh, my students, from talking to them, they felt pretty confident uh, after looking at this. Uh, understanding that data values can be stored in variables, they can be stored as lists of items, uh, standalone constants, it can be passed as input or output. So just understanding that data can be represented a variety of ways in programming. Um, remember, uh, computing devices represent data digitally, meaning at the lowest level, um, anything can be broken down into zeros and ones. Okay, um, just some terminology, a bit is short for binary digit. All right, that's either a zero or a one. A state of on or off, true or false. A byte is eight bits. Uh, more terminology, just be familiar with the word abstraction. That's gonna be all over this exam. Um, it's reducing complexity by focusing on the main idea. Uh, understanding that bits are grouped to represent abstractions. These abstractions include, but are not limited to, numbers, characters, and color. If you use the code.org curriculum, um, you kind of build up with that. You have your uh, conversion practice, just converting binary to decimal and vice versa. Then we learn a little bit about the ASCII chart and how um, when we press a key on our keyboard, it's actually a series of zeros and ones that uh, represents a certain value um, to be able to display a character on screen. Then also we look at uh, hexadecimal coloring, um, being able to use that color widget um, to turn on values of red, green, or blue light. Um, and there's obviously more uh, bits can be grouped together to represent sound, video, um, images, um, all sorts of things. Um, remember, bits can also represent metadata, which is information data about data. Um, the same sequence of bits may represent different types of data in different contexts. So for example, um, just uh, one zero, okay, if we're converting it uh, just to a number, that would represent two. Um, if one zero, perhaps that would represent um, a sequence in another program to be um, a certain shape. Um, one zero could represent um, some metadata representing the number of bits per pixel. Um, it, it is, uh, context is king there, okay? Um, analog data have values that change smoothly rather than in discrete intervals over time. Some examples of analog data include pitch and volume of music, uh, colors of a painting, or position of a sprinter during a race, are all of those occurring in real life. Um, the use of digital data to approximate real world analog data is an example of data abstraction. Analog data can be closely approximated digitally by a sampling technique. So that is how we take, uh, for example, if you take an analog audio recording and sample it frequently, um, it can be represented digitally a lot of times. Um, some, most people can't tell the difference. Some people claim they can, but um, we're just measuring so frequently, getting those pitches, tunes, the volume, um, that we are able to represent that analog sound digitally. Uh, in many programming languages, integers are represented by a fixed number of bits which limits the range of integer values and mathematical operations of those values. Um, so that can result in overflow and other errors. Again, in JavaScript, there's two different data types depending on the size of the number. There's just a regular number, and then there's also the big int. Um, other programming languages provide an abstraction through which the size of representable integers is limited only by the size of the computer's memory. Um, this is the case for the language defined in the exam reference sheet. So. I uh, just know that that's going to be the case on the AP exam. Uh, in programming languages, the fixed number of bits used to represent real numbers limits the range and mathematical operations on these values. This limitation can result in round off and other errors. Some real numbers are represented as approximations in computer storage. Um, so again, if you're trying to represent a fraction or a decimal, you may not be able to do that in some programming languages. Okay, uh, number bases. Oops, let me go back. Um, right here, uh, including binary and decimal, are used to represent data. 
All right, binary uses a combination of only zero and one. Decimal is zero through nine. Um, as with decimal, a digit's position in the binary sequence determines its numeric value. Um, that's just understanding you have your ones column, your twos column, your fours column, your eights column, and so on. Just like with decimal, you've got ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. The place value of each position is determined by the base raised. I just kind of explained that as well. Okay, data compression. All right, that is used usually to be able to transmit data, to store data, and save space. Um, the two types of data compression we look at are lossless and lossy. Um, so again, compression can reduce the size of uh, the store, transmitted or stored data. Fewer bits does not always mean less information. Right? The amount of size reduction from compression depends on both the amount of redundancy in the original data represented and the compression algorithm applied. So remember lossless data, that is where you can uh, reduce the number of bits stored or transmitted, but you can guarantee complete reconstruction of the original data. Um, that would be an example of that might be run length encoding. Um, if you are using, if you go back to the widget where you had the different song lyrics and you know repeated characters could be represented by a symbol, you could reverse engineer it to get the original message back. Lossy compression is when you remove what you feel to be extra or unneeded data. Um, that would be changing the resolution of an image and once that has been changed, um, and you've saved the new file, that new file can't go back to the original, you can't recreate the values that were taken away. Um, lossy data compression also is done frequently in music, so MP3s typically uh, detect frequencies that the human ear can't really pick up on, throws those uh, values out to reduce the size of the file, um, so it is uh, smaller than a WAV file, which usually has that data in included. Um, Lossy data compression algorithms can usually reduce the number of bits stored or transmitted more than lossless. Okay, obviously if you're getting rid of something altogether, um, you're going to be able to save more space. Um, in situations where quality or ability to reconstruct the original um, is maximally important, you want to go with lossless compression. In situations where minimizing the data size or the transmission time is the most important, then you typically want to go with um, a lossy compression. Okay, extracting information from data. Uh, some term information is the collection of facts and patterns extracted from data. Data provide opportunities for identifying trends, making connections, and addressing problems. Digitally processed data may show correlation between variables. A correlation found in data does not necessarily indicate that a casual relationship exists. Additional research is needed to understand the exact nature of the relationship. Often, a single source does not contain the data needed to draw a conclusion. It may be necessary to combine data for a variety of sources to formulate a conclusion. Okay, a lot of, uh, a lot of wordage here. Let's go back and look at it. So um, just understanding that you can use data to make inferences, um, make predictions about what you need to do, connect maybe cause and effect, um, what's trending, what's not trending. Um, sometimes we may see a correlation it doesn't mean that one thing is causing the other, okay? Um, usually, just one source doesn't have enough to draw a conclusion. You may need to take a bunch of different sources, test, 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 um, collect more data before you can say something is a cause-effect relationship. All right, uh, metadata is data about data. So, for example, the piece of the data may be an image while the metadata would be the date the image was taken, uh, information about the file size, um, the location where it was taken, if that was saved, that would all be metadata. All right, changes and deletions made to metadata do not change the primary data. So if you wanted to modify the time a photo was taken um, because your camera was in a different time zone, it's not gonna change the actual image, but you can change the time on that photo or the date. Uh, metadata are used for finding, organizing, and managing information. Metadata can increase the effective use of data or data sets by providing additional information. Um, again, by putting a year on your photos, that's helpful. Uh, with audio files, MP3s, um, the actual song, the recording is the data, but if you have information such as the artist, the album, the genre, that would all be metadata, okay? And you can obviously sort your library based on those things. 
uh, metadata allowed data to be structured and organized. The ability to process data depends on the capabilities of the users and their tools. You need to know what you're looking for, how to use it. Um, data sets pose challenges regardless of size, such as the need to clean data. Um, that would be if you, for example, a survey where people responded and gave the same answer, they just gave it in different forms, such as typing out a number instead of using numerical representation. Um, incomplete data, invalid data, the need to combine data sources, all of those can be challenges that they can be overcome. Depending on how data were collected, they may not be uniform, we just talked about that. Um, cleaning data is kind of the process of going through and doing that and fixing it. You're not changing the intent of the data, you're just making it uniform. Um, problems of bias are often created by the type or source of data being collected. Bias is not eliminated by simply collecting more data. Um, so again, make sure you are trying to remove bias as much as possible. It's probably not truly ever 100% possible to remove all bias, but by collecting data from all groups represented in a fair way, um, you're trying to remove as much bias as possible. The size of a data set affects the amount of information that can be extracted from it. Obviously, the more detailed and intense a data set, probably the more conclusions you might be able to draw, the more information you can pull. Um, large data sets are difficult to process using a single computer and may require parallel systems. Scalability of systems is an important consideration when working with data sets as the computational capacity of a system affects how data sets can be processed and stored. Okay, last one here. Programs can be used to process data to acquire information. That's kind of a duh. Tables, diagrams, text, and other visual tools can be used to communicate insight and knowledge gained from data. Again, kind of a duh. If you've ever used Excel, you've typed in some values and you can use a create a pivot uh, chart or create a table from that. Um, search tools are useful for efficiently finding information. Data filtering systems are important tools for finding information and recognizing patterns in data. A lot of this could be described in Microsoft Excel, and this next one mentions spreadsheets. So uh, programs such as spreadsheets help efficiently organize and find trends in information, especially if you're filtering and going from least to greatest, greatest to least, um, sorting by time, sorting by location, sorting by name, all of those things can help. Some processes that can be used to extract or modify information from data include the following. All right, transforming every element of a data set, such as doubling every element in a list or adding a parent's email to every student record, so that would be modifying your data set. Filtering a data set, such as keeping only the positive numbers from a list or keeping only students who are signed up for band from a record of all students. Combining or comparing data in some way, such as adding up a list of numbers or finding a student with the highest GPA. <coughs> Visualizing data as a chart, graph, or other representation. All right, understanding programs are used in an iterative and interactive way when processing information to allow users to gain insight and knowledge about data. A lot of this is really wordy, just make sure you understand how to read a table, how to read a chart, understand you know, how to find a value in a pie graph, a bar graph, a histogram, all of that knowledge is helpful here. Um, programmers can use programs to filter and clean data Combining data sources, clustering data, and classifying data are parts of the process of using programs. Insight and knowledge can be obtained from translating and transforming digitally represented information. A lot of these, to me, are very redundant, but um, I'm sure there's a reason they're split out so much. And lastly, patterns can emerge when data are transformed using programs. So again, using programs to process data, to organize data, um, to visualize that data can allow us to see trends a little bit better than just looking at a raw data set. All right, so that is a lot of reading, but hopefully you at least found this helpful. Overall, again, with the data, just understand where data comes from, how it's stored, how it can be represented, know the difference between cleaning and filtering, um, and you should be in pretty good shape.